May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. October 20th, 2024, 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. But it was the will of the Lord to crush him with infirmity. If he lays down his life because of sin, he will see offspring with long lives, and the will of the Lord will be directed by his hand. Because his soul has labored, he will see and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my just servant will himself justify many, and he himself will carry their iniquities. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is Lord, let your mercy be on us, as we place our trust in you. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done with faithfulness. He loves mercy and judgment, the earth is full of the mercy of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us, as we place our trust in you. Behold the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, and on those who hope in his mercy, to deliver their souls from death and feed them in famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us, as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, for he is our helper and protector. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, as we have hoped in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us, as we place our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest, who has pierced the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, we should hold to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to have compassion on our infirmities, but rather one who was tempted in all things, just as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us go forth with confidence toward the throne of grace, so that we may obtain mercy and find grace in a helpful time. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, drew near to him, saying, Teacher, we wish that whatever we will ask, you would do for us. But he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said, Grant to us that we may sit, one at your right and the other at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the chalice from which I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am to be baptized? But they said to him, We can. Then Jesus said to them, Indeed, you shall drink from the chalice from which I drink, and you shall be baptized with the baptism with which I am to be baptized. But to sit at my right, or at my left, is not mine to give to you, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And the ten, upon hearing this, began to be indignant toward James and John. But Jesus, calling them, said to them, You know that those who seem to be leaders among the Gentiles dominate them, and their leaders exercise authority over them. But it is not to be this way among you. Instead, whoever would become greater shall be your minister, and whoever will be first among you shall be the servant of all. So, too, the Son of Man has not come so that they would minister to him, but so that he would minister and would give his life as a redemption for many. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection What would it look like for you to embrace the role of a servant in your daily life, putting others' needs before your own? James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us 
whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Mark 10 verses 35 to 37 What a bold statement from James and John. But notice the gentleness in Jesus' response. The other apostles, however, were not as gentle. We read that when they heard about this request from James and John, they became indignant about it. In response, Jesus explains to them all, that whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant, whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. Our fallen human nature is regularly tempted to desire worldly greatness, prestige, honors, and admiration. We want others to think well of us and even to envy us. But this is a sin. Recall that this was one of the temptations that Jesus overcame in the desert. The devil tempted our Lord by promising him earthly rule over all the nations. Jesus rejected this temptation and by doing so, provides all the grace we need to do the same. One thing this passage reveals is that, our Lord is patient with us as we work through our sin. He was patient and gentle with James and John, while they attempted to gain places of honor next to him. He was patient with the indignation of the other apostles, when they struggled with envy and jealousy. And Jesus will be patient with us, as we work through the sins that most tempt us. In addition to his patience, Jesus also provides us with the tools we need to overcome our own temptations. One tool Jesus provides us with is truth itself. Jesus' truth, found in his many teachings and in the example he set, is often contrary to the wisdom of our age and the tendencies we experience within our fallen human nature. In fact, we can be certain that almost every tendency and desire we will experience in life will be disordered to a certain extent. This is because our human nature itself is disordered on account of original sin. The only way to reorder our desires and tendencies is to turn to the clear and profound truths our Lord has given us. Regarding the desire for worldly honors and greatness, Jesus provides the truth spoken above, whoever wishes to be great among, you will be your servant, whoever wishes to be first among you, will be the slave of all. Do you desire to be a servant? And to go even further, do you desire to be the slave of all? Hopefully you do, but most likely you do not. The reordering of our desires and tendencies begins by gently confronting them with the truth Jesus spoke. It is helpful to see Jesus speak these words to us with all gentleness and love, just as he did to the apostles. Facing the truth within our fallen human nature does not have to be difficult. We only make it difficult when we refuse to admit our disorders. In reality, conversion of our hearts and the reordering of our desires can be a gentle, peaceful, and even joyful process if we allow our Lord to speak to us in the way he spoke to the apostles. Of course, when we become obstinate, self-righteous, or remain in denial, our Lord will become more severe and we will experience the pain of our sin. But when we face the truth with openness and with a willingness to let grace change us, we will convert more quickly and will experience the joy and freedom that the embrace of the truth bestows. Reflect today upon the disordered desires of these apostles. Reflect also upon Jesus' gentle correction of them. As you do, look into your own soul and seek to discover the disordered desires and tendencies that Jesus wants to reorder within you. Do not be afraid to face the gentle and freeing truths that our Lord wants to speak to you. Listen to him, be open, and wisely accept what he says to you so that you will be free and will experience the joys that await. Let us pray. 
My freeing Lord, you speak all truth clearly and gently. You desire to enter my life, reveal my sin, and help me to overcome it. Please give me the grace I need to always listen to you and to allow your words to change my life. Please free me from every disordered desire and tendency in my life, dear Lord, so that I can experience the joy of true freedom. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.